You have to be careful about that. I, I learned a lesson once when I was a public defender. <clears throat> um, it was not that long after I, or before I left, actually. It's one of the reasons I left was that the caseload pressures were getting so high, they didn't even have case waiting at that time. A, a first-degree murder that would, might take a month to try was counted as a as your in your statistics or your your expected quota of cases, the same as a you know, as a confession burglary that would be done with a guilty plea. Mm -hmm. um, and one day I was in intake court, and I I must have had twenty twenty five felons that I had to interview quickly, and you had to open fifteen new felonies every single month. And so I, I remember, I, you know, you're not the primary focus at the initial parents is bail. You know, that's really the only issue is, is the person indigent and if they're indigent, the public defender can represent. And then it's a question of what should the bond or bail be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the, I found myself, un, you know, pressured to the point where you would, you would quickly read the complaints and you would do a quick review with the client and say, you know, is this true or not? So I could kind of get an idea of whether this was going to be a, a very difficult case to defend or a relatively easy one where there was going to be some sort of a plea bargain. And uh, one defendant, went, you know, I read the complaint to him. He absolutely denied it. He said it's, it's absolutely not true. And the, the complaint made it look like it was an open and shut case. It was a burglary. He was caught red-handed. And the defendant was maintaining his innocence and said, no, this isn't right. He, gave an explanation that sounded pretty preposterous. And uh, I just assumed that this guy was guilty. I went back to my office, and I was talking to some of the other attorneys um, about it, and I said, this is really kind of a ridiculous defense that this guy's got. And um, one of the other attorneys said, well, I'll take that case. And they did. And got an investigator and worked it up, and it turned out the guy was telling the absolute truth. He was completely innocent. And so, you know, I realized now, hey, wait a minute, what, you know, what good am I going to, as a defense attorney, if I'm prejudging myself whether somebody's guilty or innocent? Um, you can't do that and be an effective attorney, in my opinion. And I think that sometimes the pressures of your practice force people to make shortcuts that they wouldn't otherwise take and... Uh, it was at that point that I realized that I had to move on, that I couldn't um, practice at that volume level. And, and ever since, in fact, in my the way I set up my practice, we deliberately do not do a high-volume practice. We take fewer cases, bigger cases, um, rather than set up to do high-volume because I much prefer being able to dig into the details and really look at a case carefully inside and out, which I found I wasn't able to do as a public defender. So that's why I left. <laughs>